it's been a journey full of challenges with a lot of uh, downs, more downs than up. I have had those situations as well where I did think of giving up sport. A few of the fans threw like empty plastic water bottles at us and everything. If you work hard, there's nothing that can stop you. Welcome to the Garam Avtar Show. In today's episode, I have with me Dalima Chibber, who is one of the experienced defenders in the football arena. She started off with India Under-16 and then captained India Under-19 in the AFC qualifiers in Jordan. A versatile and hardworking athlete, Dalima is the set-piece specialist. Fans keep referring to her 35-yarder screamer against Nepal in the SAFF Championship final. She joined her father Om Chibber's football academy, Eve Soccer Club, at the age of seven, and eventually went on to play for the Indian women's youth teams. Dalima made her international debut in 2016 South Asian Games against Maldives. After that, she became a regular choice for the national team. She scored her first goal in 2019 SAFF Women's Championship against Bangladesh in 2019. Her second goal came against Nepal, a 40-yard free kick in the final of the SAFF Championship. For her prolific performance in 2019 SAFF Women's Championship, she was awarded the Most Valuable Player of the Tournament Award. Thanks for joining me, Dalima. Such a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank you for having me. So, uh, what's been your sporting journey like and what were the challenges that you faced? Um, to start with, uh, I come from a sporting background family. Both of my parents were athletes as well. So my dad uh, started his own football academy and a women's football club in 2004, which is Eve Soccer Club. And initially I wasn't even into football and even like my parents were introduced to football during their university days towards the end of their university career. And that is pretty much how like, you know, our family from track and field got introduced to football and me myself as well I was into track and field I started and I would just be running around and I just saw a lot of boys playing in the academy playing football even in school and just because I was fast and I was quick I kind of like you know started playing football with them got the touch of the ball developed uh, you know a kind of an understanding what the game is like and started enjoying the process as a uh, seven-year-old so like I loved the game because I was around people I had friends to play with and everything so I think you know that is where my journey kind of started and since then I um my first tournament ever was like as an 11-year-old in an under-19 national football championship so like you know and I think that was very early in like 2010 or something and then from 2011 I started being a part of like the youth uh, teams for the Indian national team so I started with under 14 went to under 16 19 and then senior team since 2016 so it's been quite a journey and I think when we talk about challenges the biggest challenge I think and I think a lot of the women athletes would relate to me as well has been like you know being a woman trying to pursue a career in sports and I think when I talk about that I'm not talking about like picking up and like you know starting a career right now but when I talk about like pursuing it and taking it as a career and back in like 2010 or like 2012 or 14 there wasn't really a lot of women athletes who were like you know up front except for like a few individual sports and individual events and I did grow up listening to a lot like you know maybe it's better if you do a play an individual sport as compared to a team sport and also like being in Delhi I did not really have a lot of uh, women footballers or, or like you know girls who played football so I grew up playing with boys as well so I think one of the biggest challenges that has stayed with me throughout and like you know and that is still something that I face and we have to work through is like, you know, being a football, being a woman footballer, trying to make a career and every time you step out on the field, being able to prove yourself. And then again, like, you know, with respect to that, there are a lot of things that come with it. And yeah, I mean, it's been a journey full of challenges with a lot of uh, downs, more downs than ups. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there has been like the ups have had their own uh, you know, uh, happy moments because after seeing a lot of downs and challenges and, you know, when I look back, I see that like no matter what challenges were there, it was, it all turned out well. And now there are so many women footballers who are playing and who are looking up 
to me and like you know they want to be like me they want to play for the Indian national football team as well where I grew up where in while growing up I did not have any individual like you know a woman footballer to look up to or like follow or as a role model so I think you know the journey has had its own kind of uh, challenges but yeah it has been a journey and we've come this far now <laughs> awesome awesome fantastic so what has been the best learning from your journey I think the one of the best learning has been and that goes with me still now is that not to be too hard on yourself because again like I said that uh, I have faced a lot of challenges and there have been a lot wherein I've had to fight for like being out on the field or pursuing a career wherein uh, like you know I consider myself very lucky as to like having parents who supported me with playing sports because other than them and other than like my brother and my sister there wasn't really anybody apart from them who actually supported or were like, okay, like, you know, she should pursue sports as well. And again, like, you know, being able to manage studies as well, along with sports as well, they really did not think it was possible. So I think it did kind of takes a toll when, you know, there are more challenges and there are more downs than ups. So I think one of the biggest learning has been not be, not to be too hard on yourself because every situation is very different. And the moment you start putting a lot of pressure on you and you stop enjoying it, that is where, like, you know, you do not, you stop putting that best effort of yours out there. So I think I have had to learn it the hard way, probably not to put a lot of pressure on myself and not to be too hard on myself when things didn't really go my, the way I wanted them to go. You know, I think totally makes sense. So please tell us some of your good habits that you follow during a training day and a non-training day. So, I mean, I have, since the beginning, I've led a very disciplined life, so to say, because uh, when I got into sports initially, I wanted to make it big time as well as like, you know, I did not want to leave my studies behind as well. So what my parents did was they just divided the responsibilities amongst themselves when my mother looked after my studies and my dad looked after my sport. And so I had a very routine, like, you know, a scheduled day every day until I completed my bachelor's and my master's until that time, you know, that I have had to like schedule everything, manage a lot of things. So I would get up early in the morning, which would be followed by early morning training, then school timing, come back, have lunch, maybe sleep a little. If I'm not sleeping, then do homework, go for evening training, come back, have dinner, study for one hour and then go back to sleep. So I think since that, since an early age, because I've been put through that schedule, I've just learned to manage time efficiently and, you know, multitask. So I think, you know, I would say that throughout, I have mostly 90% of my life has been like, you know, very disciplined and I've lived in that kind of a schedule. So I think that is what most of my training days look like and most of my non-training days as well look like. Because if it's a non-training day, I'll probably, I would watch a movie or I would go out. And I wasn't really the one, like, you know, growing up, I wasn't really the one to go out with my friends a lot because I would have training sessions and I would be so tired <laughs> because it meant that I wouldn't really go out or have hang out with my friends so I think yeah it's just been like you know managing time efficiently and giving time to trainings in what is required to do to make it professional super so uh, tell me sometimes you know what happens the you know the weight of frustration and doubt it you know gets it creeps in and you know some if you have had some injuries or the you know training schedules are very demanding or some, uh, you know, there are disappointing performances. So has it ever happened that at some point you thought of quitting your sport or you had very negative thoughts? And if if you had that, then how did you overcome that feeling? Honestly, I'd be lying if I said that I've never had negative thoughts <laughs> being an athlete or like, you know, that situations or circumstances did not get the best out of me because like I said before, that there are so many ups and downs in an athlete's life that you're always competing and when you're not winning, you fail to realize that, you know, there's going to be another game, but you get so focused on that loss and those mistakes and those failures that all you can think about is those few mistakes that you did as opposed to all the positives that you would have probably done in that game. So I have had those situations as well where I did think of giving up sport because like I heard a lot that like, you know, there is no professional career in football for women and, you know, there aren't enough opportunities. And along the way, a lot of us had to create our own opportunities to, you know, um, to make it professional or to make it big and a lot of us had to go out you know take a stand take a step be 
out there be vocal about you know what are the problems what should we get as like you know women athletes what kind of things that we deserve so i think you know a lot of um yeah like you know a lot of moments have been there where i've been uh you know been only um convinced with like you know negative facts around me and the environment but i think how i overcame that was because all i could focus on and all i did was like channel that energy of mine into the goals that i had set for myself cuz along the way i did not really want to have regrets that i did not try for what i wanted to achieve sure. but if i could try and give my best and then not fail at least i would be in a space where i would be like okay like i did my best that i possibly could but it mm-hmm. just couldn't happen because of other reasons so i think that is one of the things that drove me and like you know the kind of um thinking that i had to focus on and like you know things that i had to adapt along the way and uh you know make them fit according to my uh what do you call it according to like my situations and circumstances that i was put on so yeah it took a lot of work along the way but it just helped to stay focused on the positive and where i could possibly channel my energy where i have had control over the things as supposed to sitting and thinking over the things that i couldn't do totally makes sense so you know not that you are too old just now but if you could meet your younger self you know who is striving to be where you are today so uh, what is that one piece of advice that you would like to give to her again i think we spoke about my biggest learning in life and that is what i tell my younger self because i let a lot of the situations get the best of me right so i would just tell her to be like you know to believe in herself because she has what it takes and along the way like if things don't go her way to just like not be too hard on herself because there's always going to be another opportunity the world doesn't end with one opportunity which growing up i always thought that like you know i'm probably not capable of doing this i'm probably not made to make it professional in uh football as a woman athlete so i think my only advice would be like to not be hard on yourself because there's just so much more to life and i think just by believing that and like you know channeling your energy in the things that you can control goes a very long way so yeah i think that would be one of my biggest advices awesome okay so what according to you is a winning mindset for me a winning mindset is uh believing in oneself because uh because i've been seeing a lot that we are pre- presented with a lot of challenges and there have been times where we face challenges we don't usually believe in ourselves to overcome those or even to be able to find solutions to that problem so i think it all starts with having that belief in oneself mm-hmm. your own capabilities and abilities and when you do that you actually start persevering start working hard and start looking at things from a very different and a positive perspective as opposed to letting the situations and everything else get the best of you. So I think for me a winning mindset is being able to believe in yourself because at the end it is you who's capable of making the changes and achieving what you what your goals are and what your dreams are. So yeah, I mean believing in oneself has been like very big for me. So I think that is what a winning mindset would be for me as well. Great, great. So uh, what's your message to the upcoming uh, young athletes? uh my one message to them would be that uh you know enjoy the journey there's nothing like the process and once you start enjoying the process you start working even harder and you don't even realize it because you're having fun you're finding joy you're finding happiness in the little things and in like working hard and everything but alongside when you face a failure or when you face obstacles or challenges just believe in yourself that you are capable and you have what it takes to overcome those situations they may take a little longer but eventually things have a way of working out for well and uh yeah and like you know just just be there for yourself just enjoy the process cuz it just make the, it makes the journey a lot more sweeter and you know when you actually reach that goal you you would just like have that sense of happiness that like you know it doesn't really compare to anything else so yeah i would just be like focus on your goal enjoy the process and just be just believe in yourself fabulous thanks for this wonderful message <laughs> so let's come to this uh, rapid fire questions now uh, these are short like um, like one line answers 
Okay, right. so who's your favorite athlete and also what's the biggest learning you take away from his or her career? So my favorite athlete has been Carly Lloyd. She's actually from the US Women's National Team. And I read her book and I've followed her for quite a long time. And she has scored so many long range of goals. So I think like, you know, our, our stories have been kind of similar in terms of that. But through her story, what like, you know, the biggest learning that I've taken is that if you work hard, there's nothing that can stop you. Because I have seen and the amount of hard work she had to put in to be where she is. And now she's retired. She's retired as a legend. She's retired with, you name the award and she's won it, whether it's World Cup, Olympics, individual awards. So I think, you know, when, you like, when you're like able to put that hard work in, there's nobody or nothing that can stop you. So I think that has been a very big learning for me from her story. Super. So how do you keep yourself motivated? Uh, for me to keep myself motivated is to set small goals. I am more about like setting smaller realistic goals and being able to achieve them and see the progress in like, you know, over a period of time rather than setting big goals. And I think just looking at those goals and, um, you know, what kind of importance they hold for me, that has been a very big factor in keeping myself motivated. Super. What's the best advice uh, you've ever got? So uh, the one advice that I got was uh, that um, because I would be the one to like think about like, you know, pressurize myself over like losing a game or losing a race or something. So I think the best advice was that if you don't even try, you wouldn't know because there are only two possibilities. Either you're going to win or you're going to lose. But till the time you don't even give your best, you wouldn't even know what you're capable of. So when you give your best, you well, that is a big possibility you will win. And if you don't give your best, you wouldn't know how much more you need to work. And if you give your best and lose, you would not regret that you could have done better. So I think that was probably one of the best advices that I've received. Awesome. Um, any other side passion that you follow? So other than being a professional athlete, I have also done my master's in sports psychology. So I work a lot in mental health and sports and also i other than that i love reading and i love speaking so <laughs> those are like a few things that i really love doing apart from sports when i'm not playing awesome okay yeah. so how to master the art uh, of uh, composure and how to build confidence in your game and generally in life um again like it's a process is what i'd say to begin with and for me what i've been able to do is uh, like I talked about before, like setting smaller goals. It's like taking small steps, but 100% accurate steps. Because even when in a game, I feel that like, you know, I am nervous or like I am committing mistakes. I just start with making small passes, which are like 100% going to be accurate. And then like, you know, from there moving on and so forth. Because like for me to build confidence is like completing tasks in with like 100% uh, efficiency. So like, you know, doing smaller tasks and like leading them to like, uh, bigger tasks and like you know being able to achieve the goal that is what uh, has been able to help me build confidence and composure okay cool so um documentary film that inspired you the most um there was a recently not uh yeah quite a few months ago i saw a documentary it was on the australian women's football team the Matildas. And I saw that on, and then after that, like, you know, it was very inspiring to just, like, learn about, like, other women athletes, other women footballers, how their stories have been, and, like, you know, what they've had to do, and, like, you know, it's a story about, like, the entire women's football team, and, like, how they got their entire country to support them, to back them, fight for equal pay with men, and, yeah, it was just, like, very inspiring to see that how women footballers and women athletes in general as well like are coming out and like you know they they're like putting their best foot forward they're standing up for what they deserve and yeah it was just very inspiring to see different stories of different women athletes coming forward awesome uh, best nutrition advice honestly eat everything <laughs> don't just leave out <laughs> don't leave out things in total, what you like eating, have them, but again, like, you know, probably one cheat meal a week or something, but yeah, don't completely exclude the food or the meals that you like eating because it doesn't help. Sometimes you just need to eat to feel happy, to feel good, and yeah, <laughs> don't exclude the meals that you like.
Okay. Best exercises suggest for mental fitness? So I am a very big person who does meditation. And for me, breathing exercises and just uh, getting myself in a space where I'm just like calm has been very good. And again, like, you know, breathing exercises have been really associated with a lot of um, outcomes. And again, like, you know, being an athlete, because um, it's a very demanding atmosphere. It's a very competitive atmosphere. You're always on your nerves. You have, like, you know, you have, like, people on top of you, like, you know, asking for things. And, like, you know, you have to do this. You have to do that. You have to achieve success. And I think just, like, doing those breathing exercises just brings you to, like, the center. And, like, you know, you're able to... Like, you know, just calm yourself down, get yourself together and then move on. So, like, for me, all the best mental exercises have been, like, all the kinds of breathing exercises and meditation. Most embarrassing moment? I mean, there, there have been quite a few. And I think they mostly just happen in the football field. But, again, I think I remember there was, it was one of the rainy days. Like, the ground was a little slippery. And, like, his, like I I take most of the free kicks. And I was just running up to take the free kick. And then I ended up slipping at the moment and I just touched the ball a little and that was considered as playing and then we ha- everybody my entire team had to run back and uh, yeah it was very embarrassing because I was just like so confident I was like this is gonna happen and then like at the end moment I just ended up slipping because the ground was a little wet Whoa. so yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay best game memory I think it has to be um the SAF championship because we were the final that we played in that SAF championship because we played it in Nepal against Nepal and Nepal had come to India before and we had played a friendly with them and we had actually lost to them and so we were playing in Nepal in their own stadium the stadium was full of people we were warming up they threw a few of the fans threw like empty plastic water bottles at us and everything so yeah we started the game it was a very nerve-wracking game like the first 20 minutes and then like you know we were able to score after that and then we ended up winning that game 3-1 so I think that was one of the really good memories of uh, my football playing career because yeah yeah it was just it was just very different (laughs) super so what's your biggest dream um I do not there is not like one really big dream that I have when it comes to uh, uh you know um football or my professional career but I think the one reason I took up sports psychology and mental health in sports is that I myself and I've seen a lot of athletes as well uh, like you know struggle suffer with a lot of the things that come with sport and people usually fail to realize the human being behind the athlete and I think for me it is one of my goals to be able to uh, you know bring that mental health and sports aspect out to light you know bring it up front and just like be able to like you know help in any way that I can to highlight that what really goes on because there's a human being not just a player that we see on the television who's performing who's winning competitions but there's more to that player a human being behind it and uh, yeah like like I've said and then that and like the other thing is that I've been working on is like you know making the football field very accepting to women athletes and like you know just creating more opportunities and being a role model to the younger footballers that are coming up and for them to be able to see that yes you can fight and you can make a place for yourself and there is a career in football and it may not seem like it but like in the long run like you know you can you can make it big if you want as a professional women's athlete fantastic (laughs) wonderful and with this we come to the end of the show thank you so much dalima for joining me in this absolutely amazing session Thank you, Garima. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to today's episode with your host, Garima Aftar. See you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.